Hello everybody, my name is Eugene Popa and I'm very, very happy I'm here having a conversation live with Mark Andreas. We are talking about his upcoming workshop in Romania in June 15, 17, 2018. Uh, and I'm very, very excited. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time and for being part of our project here. Of course, thanks for having me. So, uh, Mark, um, for those of you who, who don't know you, I think it's fair to start with uh, your introduction. Now, who is Mark Andreas, and um, you know how did you start with with your teaching? How did you start with your NLP practice? How did you start with core transformation? Just give us a few uh, information about yourself. Sure. Yeah. So, so I think a lot of people know me as the son of Stephen Connie Ray Andreas, who uh, been in the NLP world for a long time. So, I currently have a coaching practice. So I work mostly one-on-one -on -one with clients in a wide range of different issues using tools such as core transformation and other NLP tools and hypnotherapy tools. And I also do trainings, of course, um, around the U.S. and now in Europe and other places too, heading to Asia this year as well. So really excited to be uh, joining you all in Romania and visiting a new, always love traveling to new places. Um, so yeah, I have a private practice mostly, and then I do whatever trainings are, um, awesome. are uh, I want to do. So yeah, awesome. You know, I you normally ask people. So when did you start with uh, with uh, with studying, or when did you start with your hypnosis or NLP training? But I guess in your case, yep. you studied when you were born. <laughs> yep, in a in a way, I did. Yeah, it was a pretty awesome family to be born into. I have to say. So um, as, yeah. as you're growing up, were you constantly exposed to, I don't know, uh, the NLP teachings? Were you, um, was there any point in your, in, in your life when you thought, I would rather do something else? Or how did that go for you? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of people ask me that. And both of my parents were very, um, they, they were really <clears throat> good in that they offered us you know, if we were interested in, in what they were doing for work, they would be happy to offer it to us or guide us through things, but they didn't push anything on to us. Yeah. So I have two brothers, one's in, one's becoming a doctor now and one's a chemist. And mm -hmm. so I didn't necessarily think that I would go into this line of work from the beginning, but I always appreciated hearing the stories of transformation and um, just lots of wonderful stories of these yeah. unusual ways that people were able to change. And so then um, after college, I worked in a wilderness therapy program for two years. So I uh, got a lot of hands-on experience. It was a program where I would lead backpacking trips around uh, about eight kids for three months at a time in the wilderness. And most of them wow. didn't want to be. So I got a lot of hands-on experience with conflict and teenagers that uh, were challenging me and and uh, trying to find those buttons to push and that kind of thing. So that was a wonderful experience. And, and I had wanted to do that for quite a while. And then after that, I, I was, you know, looking to what's next. And I realized, you know, I have a unique opportunity to, to really learn in a way that a lot of people don't have. And I love this kind of material. I love working with people. I love conflict resolution and whether nice. that's external or internal. And so that was kind of the, the beginning that was about eight or nine years ago of, of going into this as a profession. So you're mentioning that you, you, you very much like uh, conflict, um, you know, counseling or negotiation, if you will. Um, and you said that you work with kids and I'm going to go back to that question in a second. But um, have you ever considered taking training such as being a neg like a conflict negotiator? I, I've, uh, at some point in my life, I met somebody who was a negotiator in the Middle East, for instance. Um, or, you know, I know that in police training, for instance, you can be a negotiator for hostage taking and stuff like that. Has that ever, I don't know, crossed your mind or have you ever considered that kind of work? It has certainly crossed my mind. So far, it's only crossed my mind. Although, in, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm so happy doing what I, what I am doing so far. So, um, but it's certainly okay. ca crossed my mind. And in undergrad, I studied peace and global studies. Uh, which yeah. was, is an unusual thing to major in, um, but a few schools in the U.S. offer that. And so I did study some negotiation and mediation as a part of yeah. my undergrad training. Yeah. All right. So um, what can you tell us about core transformation? 
What is it? How did it came up? What's the history behind it? Yeah, sure. So, so the history. So, my mother Connie Ray developed the method, and there, if you if you have NLP training, or even some hypnosis training is very similar to NLP training. There's a lot of overlap. Um, you may notice some common themes in there, and at the same time, the process as a whole has some really important differences from other ways of working. And how it came about was. My mom, Connie Ray, was teaching NLP along with my father and seeing these wonderful results that other people were, were getting. And yet she was still finding that it wasn't that she didn't have issues. She had things that she wanted to transform. And yet she yeah. was finding those, those things for herself. She wasn't getting the results she was looking for in the processes that she was seeing work well for other people. And so she didn't think that was very fair. She wanted to have that kind of result herself yeah, as well. So of course. that was her motivation to develop some process that would also get her the benefits that she was wanting. And so she began by contacting people who had these issues that they had tried lots of different things with, yeah. but hadn't gotten the results they wanted. And she, this was kind of like her laboratory. And she said jokingly, uh -huh. you know, come to me and we'll, we're, we'll, I don't know what we'll do, but we'll do whatever we do, it'll be something different than what you've done yeah. before. And yeah. we'll explore and you can go home when, when we solve the problem. And nice. so, so when did core transformation come about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't actually, I'd have to look up the exact date, but I know that, it was, <laughs> I know that she was teaching it when I was, in, um, certainly when I was in like seventh, eighth grade. So okay. I remember, Occasionally, her, her saying, hey, oh, like if I was bummed out about something or something wasn't going well, um, she would occasionally offer, hey, do you want me to guide you through this process? Uh -huh. and, I see. So uh, you've, you've, you've been working with, uh, with it yourself for, for many, many years, right? Yeah, yeah. It's one of the primary processes that I use in my private practice. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is that it... It does. I find that it gets great results, basically, in a nutshell, and nice. um, to get results at a, a very deep level. And a metaphor that um, that my mom, Connie Ray, likes to share is that some processes. So if you if you break your arm, it's really important to have a cast on that for a period of yeah. time to yeah. keep it safe and allow it to do the initial healing and. That's a really important thing. You want to have a cast on there. Yeah. However, at a certain time, that cast becomes a problem, and you don't yeah. want it on there anymore. And so one metaphor is that, that certain te techniques and tools can be kind of like that cast. They're really important for a certain stage of healing. Yeah. And yeah. in a sense, what core transformation does is it, is it allows us to remove those casts that are ready to be removed, that... Uh -huh. uh, just becoming a problem at this point and constricting our motion yeah. rather than supporting our healing. Yeah. I like that. I like that metaphor a lot, actually. It's very, very nice because, uh, you know, most people would uh, have an issue in their childhood. Now they carry that in their adulthood. So if they had a cast when they were kids, the cast was small. Now the big, the hand is big and it just bothers them and, and, and um, disturbs them. So nice, nice, very nice comparison yeah. there. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um, and of course, are you, just to go say, ahead. yeah, just to say one more, just to yeah. follow on what you said is that, you know, a lot of our, uh, solutions at a certain level as a child might've been great solutions at that time in our life where we don't have a lot of yeah. uh, choices or control over what's, what we're doing. And yeah, then at a certain point, um, those choices may, even if they were a good choice to make as a five-year-old or as a seven-year-old yeah. to cope with a, a difficult situation, as an adult, may no longer may be more restricting than it is helpful at that point. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you're going to come uh, and uh, teach core transformation in Romania, as you said yourself. Uh, actually, also I spoke to a lot of uh, my peers in Romania who are teaching NLP. I don't think there is any NLP course at the very moment right now in Romania who is not teaching uh, core transformation. 
but that okay. makes it so much better because uh, you know you're coming and they now get to learn core transformation directly from the source so it is one of a kind uh, opportunity which I hope a lot of people are going to jump at but um, you're going to teach a three days workshop can you please yeah. tell us uh, a little bit about um, the flow of the training you know what how is this training going to go about you know what are people going to learn and what they should expect from it yeah sure so the primary focus is on the, the core transformation process and so in a nutshell this is a process where we can take any feeling behavior or thought that we want to change and use that as a doorway to a profound state of being that we call a core state that then transforms the initial limitation 